Okay, now what are income and substitution effects? Okay, so say for example, there is one commodity which is X, okay, which is this X, uh, and uh, there, there would be a consumer effects and there would be some producer effects. Suppose price effects, it increases. Okay. Now, being a consumer effects, you will demand less effects because the price of this commodity has increased. But if you're a producer effects, okay, and price of your commodity has increased, your income would have increased and you will, you can demand probably more of your commodity. Okay. So how can, how can the changes in prices have these opposite effects? Okay. For this, we're going to talk about uh, two kind of effects. One is a substitution effect and income effect. Okay. See, when when the price of X increases or decreases, for that matter, decreases, okay, or in general changes, there are two effects which are happening. Okay. So, so uh, say for example, you have a budget line P1X plus P2Y equals 2M, okay? And this minus P1 by P2, it, sh it, it, it actually shows the rate at which you, you, you can exchange one commodity for the another. It is the market rate, fine. Now, in case if I change one of the price, say to P1 dash, okay, then this ratio would also change. The rate at which you can exchange one commodity for the other will also change. And this is basically, roughly speaking, is a substitution effect. Okay. Also, when there is a change in price of the commodity, okay, then even though your income is constant, but your purchasing power changes. Okay. Even though your income is constant, but your purchasing power it changes fine and because of that change in purchasing power you can demand probably more or less of the commodity okay your income is say 10 okay and earlier the price of the commodity is 2 you could have bought at max 5 units of commodity now price of the commodity has fallen to 1 you can you can buy probably 10 units of commodity okay whether you will buy 10 or 5 it depends on the kind of the utility function you have but in general speaking uh, purchasing power has changed. Purchasing power is the amount of the goods you can you can buy from a given unit of income. Okay, so that has changed. So basically, this when price of X is changed, two kind of effects they are functioning. One is a substitution effect, another is income effect. Okay. Um, now, what is substitution effect, which is in which you try to keep the relative prices uh, in, in which you try to keep purchasing power constant and relative prices are changed. You try to adjust that nominal income, okay? Uh, keeping purchasing power constant. How do you keep that purchasing power constant? You'll come to know in a moment, okay? I'll do one example with you. And you just try to keep the relative prices changed, okay? So whatever change in demand that is happening because of, say, price increase or price fall, that is happening just due to the changes in these relative prices okay the rate at which you substitute one good for other this this relative prices so this is basically your substitution effect now what is income effect income effect is that you you change the purchasing power okay and you keep the relative prices constant okay so relative prices are constant and you keep and and purchasing power has changed fine now how do you do this basically what exactly is happening so let us do one example Okay, I still, I'm not going to do a mathematical example. I'm, it is just going to be a graphical exercise right now. But um, say, say for example, you have X1, X2 and P1, P2. X1, X2 is the amount of goods uh, you can purchase X1 and X2. And P1 and P2 are the price vector. Income is, in, income is M. Okay, say, say um, X1 uh, and X2, you, which you consume initially is given by 5.2. I'm not assuming any kind of utility function. I'm just assuming these are convex utility function. Okay. And this good is a normal good right now. So, and P1, P2 is 2, 2 income is 14. So you can write the budget constraint as 2x1 plus 2x2 equals to 14 or x1 plus x2 equals to 7. So how do I, how do I show this on a graph? Okay. 
how do i show this on a graph let me just put it for you guys okay 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 and uh, here you have x1 here you have x2 okay so say x1 is 0 here then x2 would be 7 and if x2 is 0 x1 would be 7 okay so let's say 7 7 clear so this is your budget line this is your budget line this is your initial budget line okay and uh, you can superimpose uh, yeah you can superimpose any indifference curve here though i should be doing this in the in the second part okay now and this this point is say 5 2 okay anything okay and this is your initial indifference curve here now say prices of the first commodity it um, uh, they they fall to one okay so earlier prices were prices were uh, i guess two two now prices are one two so in that case your budget line is x1 plus 2x2 equals to 14 14 is the income which we have assumed so in that case i can i can draw probably the new budget line here um so your new budget line is basically x1 plus 2x2 equals to 7 oh sorry 14 so in case if x1 is 0 x2 is 7 in case if x2 is 0 x1 is 14 clear so your y intercept is same fine that is your x2 intercept is same because there is no change in price of that commodity fine so so let me just put it here see this is 14 and this is your new budget line which you have okay you can probably draw you can probably draw a new indifference curve here okay which is say u1 fine which is say u1 okay so this is what i have done so this this red line was the original budget line this blue line is the new budget line which you have you have increased the consumption of say x1 and x2 okay this is the total effect of this price change so your movement from this point to say this point is basically your total effect clear now how do i break this into my how do i how do i break this into your your substitution and income effect let me just show it to you here okay let me just show it to you here i'll probably draw this fast it is x1 x2 let me just pick up those numbers 7 14 and 7 okay let me pick up the same color so this is seven okay this is the original budget line and this is the new budget line clear and i'm not i'm not imposing indifference curve right now but i know it beforehand that this this was my original bundle this five two was my original bundle now just see what i'm trying to do okay what am i trying to do i am trying to draw a fictitious budget line which will which will pass through this bundle which is your original bundle but it will be parallel to the new budget line so what i have done i have i have tried that this new fictitious budget line it should pass through original bundle one this is what i have done original bundle and second this budget line is parallel to new budget line
okay so in our example new budget see uh, in our example original budget line which was your x1 plus x2 equals to 7 has this slope of minus 1 minus the coefficient of x1 upon coefficient of x2 which is minus 1 and the new budget line has a slope of minus 1 by 2 minus the coefficient of x1 upon coefficient of x2 and since it is this this pink budget line is parallel to this blue budget line which is a new budget line and their slopes are equal it also has a slope of uh, uh, minus 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2 so it means that the relative prices are constant how the relative prices are constant because I have kept this budget line parallel to the new budget line the slopes of these two budget lines, this new, this blue budget line and the and the pink budget line is same. Okay. So I have I have kept the relative prices constant. One, I have kept relative prices constant here. So whatever change which is happening, that is happening probably because of uh uh That is, that is happening because of uh, the changes in the relative prices. Oh, what I have said, I have just said a wrong thing. So, I have not, see, relative prices between the new prices are, are kept constant, at new prices are kept constant, but relative prices have changed between old and new prices. I'm sorry. Relative prices are constant between the new prices. At, at the new price vector, it is it is constant. But uh, relative prices have changed between old and new uh, new new prices. Okay. And actually, since I have I have uh, let this new fictitious budget line pass through this original consumption bundle, so in a way, I have tried to keep the original consumption bundle uh, affordable. So the purchasing power of uh, the consumer has remained constant in the sense that original bundle of the goods, it is, it is affordable at the new budget line. So whatever change will happen now, that will happen just because of changes in the relative prices. Okay, I made mistake in saying one thing, relative prices are constant at new prices. Why? Because the slopes of this pink budget line and the, and the blue budget line is, is same. But relative prices between the old budget line, which is a red budget line and the pink budget line have changed. So whatever change which will happen, that will happen because of changes in the relative prices because you have tried to keep the purchasing power constant. So what was there? Let me just uh, show you with an, with, now let me just superimpose the indifference curve. This was your original indifference curve. Okay, how do I... Make this up. Let me just let me just make one indifference curve for you guys. Okay, and okay. So yellow one was your original indifference curve, and this orange indifference curve is on the fictitious budget line. So this movement from this point. To this point is basically substitution effect okay this is happening just because of changes in the relative prices it is it is not happening because of changes in uh, uh, it is not happening because of changes in the purchasing power because purchasing power has been kept constant okay now which I have already drawn so I see in the fictitious budget line okay now let me just because it will look very odd so this is my fictitious indifference curve also okay and this is my new indifference curve so between between this point to say this point okay this is your u1 indifference curve okay which i have drawn here okay between this point to this point what could you see relative prices constant yes here at this point 
your relative prices are constant between your pink budget line and the blue budget line relative prices are constant so what is changing whatever change is happening whatever change in demand which is happening that is happening just because of the changes in purchasing power so this movement from this point to this point is your income effect okay so this way we have we have draw we have uh, uh, decomposed the entire price effect into income and substitution effect okay okay